Good afternoon. We're here with Zach Chase, who is visiting Balmoral Hall School. He came in last night to speak with our parent community, and he's spending the day with our faculty and our staff today, um, talking about um, learning and um, modern learning and where learning is going and all things learning. But uh, over to over to Zach, who can be a little bit more eloquent about that. Uh, yeah. Um, well, it, and modern learning looks a lot like our best ideals. Um, so starting the conversation today is thinking about uh, John Dewey, right, which is much older, right, uh, ideas of over 100 years um, ago um, or so, and then thinking through how do, we, how do we work now, given the tools and the resources that we have, to get to, to realize the best intentions of our schools. Um, and so modern learning looks like using tools that we have and practices and time and resources to kind of really enliven old ideas. What are you encountering in classrooms today? Um, a, from the student perspective, and B, from the um, teacher's perspective, which makes this the conversation to be having right now? Yeah, um, we have a lot of, uh, it's very easy to think of um, engagement or and compliance dressed up as an engagement. Um, uh, so kind of, oh, these students are, are very engaged. Uh, when oftentimes that just means they're quiet and doing what we ask them to do. Um, and then you think about who you want our students to become and be as citizens and saying, oh, is compliance the best idea in a democratic world? Um, and so then how do we have our schools really help our students engage in democratic practices and engaged, uh, meaning active, meaning participatory, meaning having a great deal of agency in their own learning. Um, so if you think about any of us as adults, when something is broken or wrong, the ideal citizen would be somebody who stops and says, how can I help make this system better? And so thinking through how do we help our students to start to develop those mindsets and those habits as well. Hmm. Uh, now you've been here before. You've been here uh, yeah. like five years ago. I had to visit five years ago too. And I'm just wondering if you have noticed any difference in the the mindset or the through lines that are that you're seeing even this morning working with our teachers, as opposed to the last time you were here. I, th I think there's definitely uh, there's movement that has been right. So uh, kind of starting to play with some ideas mm -hmm. uh, five years ago, and really seeing those ideas come to fruition. Mm -hmm. And teachers are actually doing and building those things that they were just thinking about maybe when I was here before. And now it is a question of refinement. So mm -hmm. we've started doing that. Now what have we learned? So taking that pause and that break to do some reflection about what are we learning as an organization mm -hmm. and how do we continue to learn as an organization. Uh, now you were here last night speaking with our parent community yeah. and this, this video is going to be seen by our parents and the, the world at large. Yeah. So uh, this is an unfair question but if you had to crystallize uh, one thing mm -hmm. that a parent could take from what's going on in education right now, one nugget that they could start doing right away in their in their lives with their children, with their students and their family, mm -hmm. um, what one thing would you like to pass on? Uh, it came up last night in conversation and I think that it is, is a valuable frame. Um, and so that is the question of are we focusing on work or are we focusing on learning? Uh, so in the conversations we have with our students, our kids' teachers, um, are we asking about whether they got something done or how well they learned when they were doing and if we're asking kids about, um, oh, did you get that done? Uh, is a less powerful question than, what did you learn while you were doing that? Mm. Um, or if a student didn't do something, or your child didn't do something, oh, how's that going to affect your learning? Uh, right? Mm -hmm. That's a more difficult question, and kids are going to need some help and some scaffolding in answering that, especially our younger learners. Um, but by, by shifting that focus to whether or not you did that compliant thing mm -hmm. to what you got out of, being compliant, right? So yeah. compliance is still not a horrible idea, mm -hmm. but unquestioning compliance is, is worse. Sure. Uh, now, um, well, we'll just uh, thank you for your time. I just want to um, be able to share. You've got some resources. You've written a book, uh, okay. but are there any resources that you would like to promote as we as we close this interview? Out? Sure. Um, so uh, my colleague Chris Lehman and I wrote Building School 2.0, uh, uh, constructing the schools we need, uh, which is a 95 theses nailed to the schoolhouse door about uh, just kind of these ideas. Um, very short, brief, right? User-friendly is what we were going for. Um, and it is built uh, 
for all audiences. So we actually have some schools who have picked it up and read it with their students and said, yeah. what would it look like if this was the kind of place? So very same thing with families and, and parents mm -hmm. as well um, and looking through those pieces. And where can the world at large find you if they uh, wanted to contact you? Any of your online re book retailers uh, in e-book and in print form. So it's and you're on Twitter? I'm on Twitter, um, at Mr. Chase, M-R Chase, um, and then blog at autodidactic.com, uh, A-U-T-O-D-I-Z-A-C-T-I-C.com. I didn't think about having to say it to people when I named it. Uh, so yeah, folks can find me there, and I'm happy to be part of any conversation that is about learning. Thank you so much for spending time with us. My pleasure.